So I'm now going to show you how the guest list works and all the functionalities inside this new feature of Fiercely. So on the access control tab, you, have the, you need to have the guest list access activated. We have seen the RSVP form on another video where you can have a registration form for your attendees. And once your attendees register to your event, they will come straight to the guest list. However, when they register, they are not yet allowed to enter into the event. So their status are registered and you need to manually allow each participant to enter into the event. You can do that by opening their profiles or by selecting multiple users that we'll see very soon. So when you open their profile, here you can see the first name, the last name, the email, and the other fields that you have added on our registration form. So in this case, we have location, but this participant didn't uh, fill the, his location, so that's why you have NA. Now, in order to allow them to enter the event, you need to approve their access. This will generate a unique link just for this participant. But at this moment, this participant is not yet aware of this link. So you can either send manually uh, the link directly from Virtually by clicking Send Invite, or you can also do that manually with, your, uh, or ex with an external tool on your site. So once you click that, the participant will receive uh, a link on his email that you can see here. And this is my personal link to, the, to this event. So I will open it into a new incognito. And this unique link will be transformed in the, uh, with this unique link, the user will be entering directly into the event. And the, his profile is automatically refilled. You can also revoke the access to the user. So if the user is online, you can, uh, they, they will be disconnected immediately. Let's show you again this, uh, this one. So I will, let's wait that the user is online. Is online again. Let's revoke his access. It's revoking the, the guest access. And you see that the user is say that you can no longer access this event, so that please contact the organizer for more details. So this link that was previously sent can no longer be used. Or you can also delete the, the participant uh, or this guest directly from, uh, direct, remove it completely from the guest list. This is one way to do, it's through the registration form, but you can also, for example, for VIP people, they don't need to register, you want to add them manually. So let's add someone manual. Take the email is important because this is the unique uh, identifier of the user and uh, you cannot have two guests with the same email. The roles, you can automatically assign roles to this participant. Let's say, for example, Peter is a speaker. So you can associate his user as a speaker or he is also a host. So you can, you can select multiple roles from these two that are today possible and you can re clear everything or select again. So let's say that uh, Peter is a speaker. What he's going to do is when he enters into the event, he will be automatically assigned as a speaker. So you don't need to manually associate these users to assign these user as a speaker once he's online. Another possibility is to tag your users. So let's say that he uh, is a facilitator. You need to click enter in order to have the guest, the role assigned. Oops, I clicked twice. So the guest was automatically added to my list. Once it's added manually, it's automatically allowed. So you don't need to allow the user again. And you can see you, this is automatically allowed. So the, the link is automatically generated. You can still send them an invite though. And you can see that the roles are speaker and that he has a tag facilitator. What is this tag going to be used? Currently, it only allows to filter the tags here on this guest list. But in the future, very soon, we will enable uh, or we'll use these tags to allow specific access to rooms. Let's say that you have a room for VIPs tickets. So if you have someone that purchased a VIP ticket, they can enter that room. If they don't have this tag, they will not be able to enter into the room from uh, inside the, our application. 
So this will allow us to control who can access the rooms, but uh, we also implement these tags on the shuffling, on the manage attendees, so that you can select certain tags on the shuffling based on the tags of the users. So this is one way, it's to add guests manually, but you can also import guests when you have from your registry, you want to use Eventbrite, you can uh, export the list of attendees on Eventbrite to a CSV file and import it here automatically. So let me just show you an example. We need to have uh, a column for the first name, a column for the last name, a column for the email, the roles and the tags. The roles and the tags, they need to be, um, they can, you can set several tags and several roles for a user, but they need to be separated by a SME column. So this is, I've created this on Excel, so you can save it. When you save as a CSV file, it's important that it's a comma delimited CSV file, so that between each a value, it's a comma there. So you can save it and on, um, on your import guest list, you can get it from the list. Take it from the guest, and I'm importing the CSV file. Once you import it, you need to map our columns that we are uh, using inside the guest list, which are first name, last name, email, roles, and tags with the columns that you have on your file. For example, it automatically detects that uh, you have a column which is first name, so it automatically assigns to the first name, but you can select with another one. For example, last name, you don't have any column mentioned last name on the, on the, on the file. We made it purpose to call it second name so that you can see, so it was not automatically assigned, but you can click second name and it will map the second name column to the last name property of the guest. Same thing for email, user roles and custom tags. You can only have one uh, column for selection. So if I select again second name, it's duplicated, so you cannot import it. So let's go forward. Once you import it, you can see what's, uh, what is the status. You can preview what's going to happen. So you can see that this user, so all these entries are the ones from the CSV file, and then they are compared to the ones that you have on the guest list. So this user is duplicated, so the exact same information. Uh, we did this, uh, so no need to, to import them. Uh, you can see that this user is new user, so you, it will import it. This one is also duplicated, and this one is duplicated. So mean duplicating is duplicating inside the file, so you have the same uh, emails on the two twice the same email on the file. So let, let me open again our CSV file and remove update this email to another one and save it again. And now you can go back and import again a new file. You need to do the mapping again. And now you can see that those are news again. If they were updated on the file, they would uh, be shown here updated and then you could still import them or not. So let's import these users again. We import the three users. The users are automatically added to the, the list of guests. And now you can, so they are allowed, but they have not yet received the emails. So what we can do, you can select multiple ones. So this one is revoked. I don't want to, to do them anything. So let's uh, send them the invite. Let's send the invite to the four guests. You can see that the invite has been sent. Or you can revoke their access so that the link doesn't work anymore. Or you can open the participant and see uh, again their status and what they have sent. So this invite has been sent. 
just want to, and this user is host. So let's open on a new incognito tab and, um, and see how the hosts or the speakers are automatic. The tags are automatically assigned to that user. Using the unique link of this particular user. And he automatically enters to the event. You can see that he can access the broadcast, which is only a feature for the hosts, that he can manage the, the pools, that he can access the cockpit with his user. So he has all the controls that he can, uh, he can do. The last part of this feature that we want to show you is the export CSV file. So you can see, for example, this participant has attended the event. So you might want to have a report after the event to know exactly the status of uh, who attended or not, or get the list of registrations directly from uh, your team. So you can export this to a CSV file. And the CSV file will be opened. And you can see that you have the first name, last name, email, the location of the user, which is a custom field that you added on a re registration form, the different rules that the user has, the same thing for the tags and their status. You can also see the unique access link. So for example, if you want to send the access link using your own email system, you can uh, export via the CSV file and use it with an external tool. This completes our this big feature. So I hope you enjoy it. Really looking forward to hear your feedback and um, hope that this will enhance the quality and control of your events.